Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I've got crazy hair again, and I have a short video for you about what to eat during your cycle, before it, during it, and honestly, what I want you to get is that you can be in the position where getting your period doesn't have to throw your life off. And I've heard a lot of girls, women, talk about this, um, and I thought I probably should share my perspective being a woman now who went for not even having my period for like most of my life when I was supposed to be having it, going through massive infertility stuff, treatments and whatnot, healing my body, getting it back, going through the rough stages of getting it back, feeling uncomfortable, and now getting my period regularly like clockwork and I don't have any like symptoms or side effects that are negative of having it, right? Like I don't, I don't become a crazy person that I know of. Maybe I do. I don't know. Ask my husband. Um, I don't become super crazy. I might, the only thing that happens now is I feel slightly um, tired or like hungrier a couple days before for carbs, but hello, carbs are life. We're supposed to eat mostly carbs anyways, the right kinds. And this has a lot to do with what you need to do if you're a woman right now that has um, negative symptoms while you're getting your cycle. So here's what is up, okay? This is also a new and improved shorter version of a longer video that I did that's on my YouTube that I'll link below if you like, really want to nerd out on it like I do. Um, that was like a Facebook Live from my Facebook group, which come join my Facebook group, Food Rebels, if you're not in there and you want to be a food rebel and think for yourself when it comes to how you eat. Okay, so what is happening when you feel bleh, like gross when you get your period? This is what is happening. 80% of your energy day to day is going towards digestion. It's going towards you utilizing the food that you're taking in that is like your life force energy so that your body can do everything that it needs to do, taking good care of you, keeping you well, keeping you healthy, all these things every single day. It's a huge, huge piece of how you run. And so this is why maximizing and having a healthy digestive system is everything. It's the core of it all. It's literally your core, right? And I think this is so funny because I used to, you know, have my Pilates studio and it was all about core strength and it's the truth, like everything is connected. So you have to work from the core, the inside out for all healing. And what this means is you need to make sure that you're having a healthy digestive system so that you don't feel drained because it's pulling extra energy than even that 80% that it requires all the time, okay? So there's a couple things here. Um, when you are on your cycle and you feel bloated or you feel super tired, cranky, fatigued, you're laying on the couch, uh, like what do I do? Um, what you need to know is what's happening is showing you that there are things to still be worked on to be more efficient, to be more effective, to be running better digestively. So what happens when it's time for you to have your cycle is that 80% that is typically going towards digestive energy now is shunted all towards reproduction systems. So 80% instead of going to the gut, and it's not just your stomach, right? We know it's like everything from your mouth all the way through when you eliminate. But that system, instead of getting 80% of all your energy, it now goes to reproductive systems because your body doesn't know maybe you're gonna get pregnant. And so it needs to prepare you and have everything in order. And so that means 80% has the focus on reproduction and that leaves 20% to digestion and everything else that typically had 80%. So it's a big drastic energy shift is basically what I'm trying to get you to say. To, not to say, I'm saying it. <laughs> to understand, okay, I'm just really excited about this for some reason. So this is why you're showing symptoms, it just means um, there's a big energy shift, and so if you have anything that maybe isn't working quite as effectively as it could be, then it's going to show up, right? Because your immune system is in your gut, and so if you're feeling run down, like there just isn't enough energy going towards the areas that it wants 
was and usually is going toward. And so you're working with less capacity, right? And and this is why women who are pregnant can often get really run down because they're working with a way less capacity for themselves and the baby's getting that majority of energy. Okay, that's a different video. So what you need to know is one, you want to really focus on, on working with your digestion to make it even more efficient and better and effective when you're not on your period. Um, but it's actually the same key concepts to feeling better now, okay? So basically, your gut doesn't have as much energy to break down food. So what do you want to do with this information? You want to eat foods that are easy to digest. You don't want to make it hard. So top foods that are hard to digest, number one, animal protein. Don't go eat a steak on your cycle. Um, don't go eating loads of avocado toast on your cycle. That's fat. Don't eat a bunch of, I brought some props, avocado. Um, where's my other prop? I think I used it all. I had a thing of raw walnuts, but I just used them in a, in a Christmas dessert. So like even nuts that are like raw and healthy or almond butter, things like that. Protein from animals, because it's high fat, and because it's protein, it's hardest to digest, okay? Then fat. Fats are harder to break down. The easiest foods to break down are carbohydrates, okay? So that does not mean go and binge on cookies and saltine crackers. No, nope. you need to have carbs with purpose. So this means eating lots of carbohydrates that are easy to digest, which are fruits and vegetables, but the bonus that I can give you is that you want to also eat the ones that are super soothing to your gut and super healing towards the gut. That's my dishwasher going. Um, because, again, you don't have that full strength to break food down. And so also eating lots during this time is not a good idea. So you obviously want to work with your hunger and work with your appetite, but here are some, the, the, the main points are this. One, reduce animal protein. If you can take it all away, I would do that, okay? Cut it out because you're just going to make it harder for your body, which is already having a hard time, okay? Um, second, reduce fat consumption. So this means nuts, nut butters, avocado, um, certainly like fried foods, fatty foods, oils, um, especially like really bad for you oils, like canola oil, and even the, the oils that I recommend and that I cook with like coconut and avocado and olive oil, you wanna limit them because it's just gonna like clog the system, right? So it's like you have this pipe, but during this time of the month, it's like narrow. And so you need to like get foods through that are simple and easy. So what are these foods? Foods that are simple to break down and foods that are good for the gut. And plus I have a couple tips for um, just when you have your cycle in general, okay? So one, bananas. Bananas are obviously a carb, but they're a fruit and they're super soothing to the gut and they fight bad bacteria in the gut. So remember like there's, if you have too much bad bacteria in your gut before your period, when you're on your period, they're not gonna have like all the good guys fighting against them like they usually do. So banana, so eat them plain, put them in smoothies. Um, smoothies are actually just a super good thing that you could be doing right now when you're on your period because they're mechanically digested because they're blended, right? They're broken down, it's like baby food sort of. Yes, it is like baby food, but smoothies, but loads of smoothies with like fruit in them, like bananas or as a staple, then pick like another frozen fruit like blueberries or strawberries and then put some dark leafy greens in there because greens are really helpful to like clean the gut out and they're easy, easy on it, okay? Especially in a smoothie. Um, second would be just melons. I have a cantaloupe. What do you know? Melons are sort of like baby food as well because they're pre-digested. They're super soft. Um, you don't have to blend them. Just eat them and eat them plain because they don't pair well with other foods. So eat melon, eat cantaloupe, honeydew, watermelon. They're also very hydrating and so they'll help you out. Um, as far as vegetables go, you want to think high water content. So cucumbers, celery, 
zucchini, yellow squash would be all really good ideas. Um, but really any fruit in general is going to be good because fruit digests the fastest of any of our food groups. It's typically about like 20 minutes. So, and you, you need the glucose because that's your major macronutrient that you're always working with. And then you're going to get gut healing benefits because there's lots of properties within fruit that are healing and also cleansing. And so you're getting the benefits without the take back of like being difficult for your body to work with and break down to be able to use those nutrients and those benefits. So fruits and then high water content vegetables and um, low lower animal protein for sure or omit and then low fat. So um, you could think of doing like vegetable soups, broth-based soups, smoothies, salads. It doesn't matter if it's raw or cooked unless that has something to do with your unique digestive profile and human design, which I'm going to touch on here in the end. But um, two more tips, okay? So uh, this is my ginger root, and it's in a glass container. But if you have ginger root, you can just slice a couple slices off and then steep it in hot water and make some ginger tea or put ginger in your smoothie like with spinach, bananas, and mangoes and it's really refreshing and ginger is calming to the gut, okay? So this area in general has a lot going on so we wanna be able to have it chill out a little bit. So ginger root fresh is awesome. So don't put dry ginger powder in things, like if it's cooked maybe, but not, not like in your smoothie, that wouldn't taste good. And then, my secret weapon is nettle leaf. Can you see that? It's getting dark here because it's winter. Um, it's almost the shortest day of the year. So nettle leaf tea or nettle leaf tincture is the best thing. So make the tea, drink it in the afternoon because it's more absorbable in your body in the afternoon. So two o'clock, three o'clock, anything on is fine. You can do more than one cup, use it like as like a water, hot water pack almost. When I was going through the phase where I had my period back, it was still a little bit choppy or regular, but I was like, oh my gosh, this is what people talk about, like why it sucks to get your period. I knew what it felt like. You just felt like things were not flowing well, right, digestively. And not only was my favorite thing that really I could feel instantly helping. And there's something about holding a cup of hot tea too, right? I think there's like a psychology study on this about how it um, it calms you down and it takes away cravings and stuff. So nettle leaf tea, and if it's really bad, you can get the tincture. Um, just make sure there's no alcohol in the tincture and then you can take it even daily. So I had a client one time who came off of all of her birth control with no problems by just eating our plant-based diet way and using a lot of nettle leaf. So it's very powerful and something you wanna keep on hand if you're a woman with a period. Um, the reason this works really well is because it helps to clear estrogen out of your body. So good to know, good to know. Um, but any other like herbal tea, I also have lemon balm, get traditional medicines, it's a really nice brand. This one's organic reishi mushroom, anything like that, but definitely get the nettle leaf, um, I swear by it. And I don't even have to drink it anymore. That's like how strange it is to go like from such a like low point with my body and my health to be like, everything's fine. Like, what's the big deal? I don't have to eat any different way because I eat like this all the time, which is the key, right guys? So I want you to think about this. Get into the mindset that you don't have to have it be this way. You don't have to have every month times where you feel like crap and it like takes you out of your career, your business, showing up online, being with your family, being with your kids, anything like that. Just expect that it's going to be better, but it takes all of these tips consistently, right? It takes knowing how your body works, knowing that getting your gut to be well is everything. And the way that you do that is to eat a plant-based diet, okay? Because Animal protein is always going to be the hardest thing to break down. So if you're having bacon for breakfast, there's so many things wrong with that. Don't do that. But it's going to like mess everything up, honestly. Okay, now, so get into the mindset that this gets to shift, this gets to heal. You get to be one of those people who have no big problems around your period. You 
flow with life. And I get that we have hormones and they're going to go through phases and we go through emotions. Like I'm an emotional authority in human design, so I go through all these waves anyways. But it doesn't ever make me need to like lay on the couch and cry about my stomach hurting. Like that never happens, okay? So if I can do it, you can do it. But set that intention and get your butt in gear and get eating the right foods. Now, this other part, when I mentioned before like hot or cold, if you don't know what I'm talking about, this has everything to do with your unique digestive profile. And the reason that this is huge is because it is unlocking keys to how you digest food the best. And this will not be like anyone else. It won't be like me and eating plant-based is for everyone. And so this has more to do with um, the environment that you eat in and your strongest sense. So like, for example, my strongest sense is inner vision. And so that's how my body can tap in to be able to digest foods in the most effective way. And it's really funny because once I learned that, I'm like, oh my gosh, now I understand how I see food and how I work with food is, I would always say this to people, that it feels like when I talk to someone, I can sense your energy and then I can feel what you need to feel inside your body and I can feel what foods would do that in a certain way. So it might sound crazy, but it's part of my intuition, but it's, it's inner vision. So that's how I take in information and how my body will best receive the food that I eat is by me like seeing it doing these things. And good thing I know what it is doing. So it's awesome. So you get to do that. And then when you know your human design and you can eat according to your energy type first, that's big. But then if you know both of your, your digestive profiles, it's even better, right? So my other uh, part of what makes me unique is I'm an evening digestive type. So I eat the most at night, right? Which most of the time, if you, if you hear people talk about like getting rid of bloating, they say things like don't eat late at night. Well, that doesn't make any sense for me. Like it's wrong. It's wrong for me. So you need to know this about yourself. So take these tips, take these um, um, insights about what you can do when you're on your cycle and see if you can extend it more into your day-to-day -day life because it will help you. It will keep the momentum going especially when your digestive energy shifts back into where it's usually at, and then you do this stuff, it's really, really powerful. So, and then if you layer on top knowing your human design, knowing how your energy works, and knowing your unique profiles, you're like golden. You just have to practice it and implement it, okay? So if you're interested in working with me to know how this works, um, I have some spots for one-on-one -on -one open. You can send me a message, head over to my website, or send me a DM on Instagram. Um, and let me know what was most helpful about this video, what's going on with you. And um, if you have any friends that are dealing with this stuff, please tag them um, underneath. So make sure you hit subscribe and like this video if you liked it. And I will talk to you guys so soon. Take care. Bye.